So, when we signed the Micronesia Challenge Initiative in 2006, it was with just that in mind, that there needed to be a, an alliance within the alliance, within the alliance, within the region, that would be responsive to those things that we need to stand in long lines of 197 people in order to reach. And most of the time, we never make it to the window. This shared commitment by the three Micronesian governments to conserve a minimum of 30% of the nearshore marine resources and 20% of our territorial, uh, ter 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 terrestrial resources by 2020. Most of the challenged in the Micronesian challenge have already met much of that requirement. And thanks to Palau, they made up more than made up for the shortfall of the other two. Thank you, Palau. I see Palau. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Micronesia is a treasure chest of culture, of tradition, of language, of everything that one would need to associate a human being with and its, and its uh, union with the ocean, you will find in Micronesia. Even if you're on top of the hill in Sopes or, or in Babadab or anywhere else, the ocean is there and the ocean is there. So this union of human beings with their ocean environment cannot be seen more manifest in what is known as Micronesia. We have already begun to feel the brunt of climate change in our islands. Even when people were still wondering when that one degree or one and a half or two degrees were going to kick in, it's already kicked us in the... <laughs> so that no one needs to remind us of what we must do to stay up for, keep our nose above the water. But there needs to be a respectful way of, respectful way of doing things, isn't, isn't there, in this world? So Micronesian Challenge gives us that respectful way to approach what must be a daunting task. If you really look at the resources that we have, the island size that we have, the scattered, scattered population, and the other components of these economies of scale, which are pounded us for decades. Investing in this regional framework provided a way to collectively understand and deal with that and to show a united front when it came to when it came to engaging with our development partners and those who would dare to doubt our intentions. People do not realize this, but if the United States is number one in, sh in shoreline and Australia is number two, everyone would jump to conclusions that maybe the Philippines, Indonesia, or Malaysia would be the third longest coastline in the world. In fact, the greater geographical Micronesia coastline <coughs> is the third longest in the world. And it makes sense. The resources of the tuna, the 54% that the PNA contributes to the world supply of tuna today, would never have gotten that high had it not been for the fact that we had a coastline that is still that is still healthy and alive and capable of interchanging its bio with the rest of the ocean. Without that, there would not be that resource. The only challenge that we have now in, 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 in conjunction with the Micronesia Challenge and all those things that we promised that we would do at that time is that Palau, the FSM, and the Marshals really want to do a little bit more than what we undertook in the promise. Palau is now 
declare the sanctuary. And congratulations again to Palau. Uh, they are always quick to remind me that Palau was the first sanctions, the first, not the first, the first <laughs> shark sanctuary in the Pacific or in the world. But I quickly remind them that we still have a bigger one than they do. <laughs> <laughs> the addition of FSM in that mix now makes us probably the largest overall sanctuary anywhere. We are the size of the United States, except we're in the middle of the city. So for small countries with extreme challenges in mustering the resources to provide for the constitutional mandated services that we all must promise, we have in all our constitutions the requirement that we provide health and education universally for our people. With the coming of climate change and the challenges that that poses to our ocean environment, we are doubly punished. In other words, not only do we, have, do we not have the wherewithal to deal with that challenge, but we must sacrifice the meager resources that we have in health and education and other essential services to make up for that, for that new intrusion into the peaceful societies of Micronesia. So, now, the next step would be for us to figure out how to marry up those resources with the need. How to marry up the te technical know-how and the financial wherewithal with the target area population, the target area landmass that we need to deal with. How do we engage our, our uh, development partners with protecting what it is that we still have and also to promise us that they would be by our side when we, again, enlarge the footprint of conservation and, 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 and care for the environment in the ocean. It's easy to say we're going to protect 2,000 miles and 800 miles wide area of, uh, of ocean. But the challenge is, how do we make sure that it is indeed protected? So all of these considerations must be part of what we consider the challenge. The challenge to fulfill 20% and 30% is done. The new challenge is, how do we make that work for everyone? It is not an easy, easy uh, problem to solve. But We've encountered more difficult problems in the past, and we have come away with uh, a, a, a good, proportionally speaking, a good number of victories over not so good victories. And I think the, 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 the same challenge will work here. The Micronesia Challenge provides the base. We use the tools that we have based on what's in there, and then we move on to where we can accumulate support, uh, try out new methods, bring in new technology, and most importantly, marry up the resources with the needs. Because that seems to be a perennial problem in small island countries like ours. We have a challenge in the next few days. It's not a Micronesia challenge, it's an Earth challenge. But I think that coming to the table as, as a group of island citizens, from, from the Indian Ocean, from the Pacific Ocean, from the Caribbean, and facing down those who say that it is not possible. Bringing in our friends from the LDCs, the African uh, vulnerable states, and other areas of Asia, to join us in this march for climate sanity. I think we can, we can in fact claim a spot in that leadership position and say, part of the challenge. That's the message I think I can give. I want to say thank you to the support we have received from GEF. I'm really terrible with acronyms. BMUD, USA, Nature Conservancy, Conservation International. All our friends here at the podium, 
and everyone who has contributed to make the challenges in Micronesia solve. Thank you very much.